Now that looks better. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Atomic Craft server. In the last episode we built up this kelp farm and it has been producing quite a fair amount of kelp. We also worked on the piping system that will eventually deliver the kelp into the factory system. It's going to go over here and that's what we're going to be working on in today's video. We're also going to be working on laying a few pathways down towards the entrance of the village so that we can get a rough idea of how many builds we need to fill this place up and also what builds need to be placed where. So today's project goes as follows. I want to build the outer shell of the factory build. I want to put in the kelp fuel maker 3000 that I've designed over on my creative test world. And I also want to make some pathways in the village to give me a rough idea of how the place is going to end up looking. So today you've already seen me take out the villager breeder in preparation for this. And I've also gathered up all the wood I think I'm going to need for this build in my wood shulker box right here. So I think it's time we head into a third person time lapse of me building up my build for the kelp factory. It's time lapse time people and you all know what that means. It's time for my monthly roundup of all things just James. So first off I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's recently subscribed. Just three weeks ago I was sitting at 170 subscribers and now we are nearing on 1000. So thank you guys so much. This means the world to me but because of this i've decided to open up a discord server which you can find on my link tree account but also i am planning on opening a patreon so i'd like you guys to give me feedback on what you want to see me add on there but moving away from that as you can see with this build i tried to go for a bit more of an industrial look and theme than my previous builds i think it turned out okay here i decided to add kind of like a sticking out section i wanted to mess with the shape give it a little bit more depth than just your regular rectangular build and i think it came out well with the way i did it rather than it being attached to the ground it was actually attached to the side of the build and i think that it definitely does go and show what i was aiming for with this build now i've also decided to try something new which you will see come up in just a second where i tried to build a bit of a chimney and i didn't want just any regular chimney i wanted a really fancy really bulky looking chimney uh, that's kind of looks a little bit over the top now that i think about it but i i think it turned out well it's the first time i've ever actually put a chimney on a build and i really wanted to make it my own style and i think i did a good job at that i really wanted a chimney because i really like the way that the smoke looks to the side of the build but that's gonna be it for this time lapse and i'll see you all later I am so happy with the way that this build has turned out and now we really need to hurry up and move on to the interior of this thing because the kelp farm is overproducing and is overflowing these chests. So without further ado, let me get my chip disc out and let's hop it in the jukebox and move on to the interior. And the interior to the kelp factory is all complete. Now we need to finish linking it up to the kelp farm, which just requires this one last step by running this water pipe up here. I am going to use glass instead of the acacia trapdoor piping system that we've been using since the start of this, just because we can't actually see in here. And that's the whole reason behind this massive chimney in truth. So if we just run this along the top and then connect it up and the whole system should be good to go. And yes, the whole system should be linked up. The kelp factory and the kelp farm should now all be working. The kelp should come up through here 
across like this over these hoppers and in to the furnace array down here which should empty out the kelp dried kelp into these chests and then we will hook up a few redstone devices and then the whole factory smelting process of the dried kelp blocks that we're going to need for the super smelter will be all complete Okay, so as you just saw, I just placed in a bunch of redstone machinery under the surface of the kelp factory. And this thing is pretty much ready to open up. However, there's just a few more bits and bobs that I need to get done. I need to move all of the kelp storage, all the temporary stuff, into its permanent home so that I can craft it all up into kelp blocks. And then I can also show you how this works. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that, move that over here. So all the kelp should have gone through the water stream now. And if it's working, that is a very promising sign. We should see, yep, there's some dried kelp coming through the system now. And once this is all finished smelting up, I can show you the process of how this thing works. Yeah, uh, that is extremely satisfying, but uh, also not so much because that's... That's a massive loss. Maybe I've just sent too much kelp through the system at once here, but this this is the sort of situation we want to avoid in future. So I think I'm going to have to add some sort of lava system on this, but I don't know how I'd fit that in because it might mess with the water streams going on here. I don't know. I'll have to figure this out. I think I've come up with a pretty smart solution where I've just wrapped it round on itself. The only way this should in theory be able to lose now is if a kelp goes around for longer than five minutes but i don't think we'll have that problem seeing as that we won't have six double chests of kelp ever going through at one time ever again so uh, let me show you how this works if i just throw my kelp in here then if these furnaces are full which i'm assuming they are they just keep on going around it and you'll also notice that i've swapped out the pressure plates for signs here because well the signs were annoying with the clickety clacks of all this kelp. Now, I need to hop down and check on the furnaces that have already smelted because I think they've run out of fuel. And this would be a prime time to show you how the system works. Yeah, so they've all run out of fuel and they've all dried roughly. Yeah, exactly a stack each, which is equal, which is really good. So now that I've emptied my inventory out and the only thing left in my hotbar is my axe and my food, the last thing I need to do is to just chop these out like this and i do this on both sides and most of the time these would normally be a bit fuller but because this is just a test run i'm fine with doing it with just a stack i press the button the water from the back would send the kelp my way and then i would simply just turn all of this into dried kelp split it into two separate ones and put it in the dispensers like this and then the redstone machinery that you saw me placing earlier We'll shoot it up and set these back on fire to make even more dried kelp. And once the first furnace is filled up, the second one should begin to fill up. And then all I need to do is go back and replace my chests. So now that the first dried kelp block has been made, we can officially open up the kelp farm factory for business. Say hello to the kelp farm fuel maker 3000. I really just butchered that name. Now, I think it's about time we move on from this project for today's episode and work on laying out these pathways. Now, unfortunately, due to time constraints, we're not going to be able to lay anything out proper. So we're just going to get the base plans down for today. And I think we're going to have a pathway leading from here over there. Then one leading to this build, which will eventually be taken down or replaced with something much better looking. And then maybe one that will straggle off towards the coastline here i think that's the plan that i've got down in my head for now and i'm gonna lay it out and see how it looks let's take a first glance at this and i think that this path layout is actually looking really good it gives me a good idea of where i need to put builds a few in the middle but it also leaves enough room for a few alleyways a couple of 
I guess you could say, cul-de-sacs, and, you know, just, it gives me a really good idea of how this island is going to end up looking like, and it's, it, it already looks so much better in my head than what I originally thought it was going to look like, and these builds that I've placed down already, especially this one and the one that I've just put up today, has really, really made me think that my building style during the season has come a long way. However, like I was just saying, this video is coming to an end and I want to give my comment of the day and that is from Billy, loving the new video style. Um, I just want to say thank you because it took a lot of effort to come up with that sort of intro that I put in the last episode and as you've seen today, I've tried out another couple of few things. So I am really trying to improve my content so that you guys get the best watching experience possible, but unfortunately due to time constraints this is going to be the end of the video and what better place to end it on than the kelp factory but thank you guys for watching if you've enjoyed it please slap a like on this subscribe if you are new and i'll see you around bye